Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing well. We're continuing our Wayside School is Falling Down series. We're at chapter 24, another story about potatoes. Well, Joe was next in line. He had forgotten his lunch. And what would you like, Joe? asked Miss Mush, the cafeteria manager. What do you have? Joe asked. Potato salad, said Miss Mush. Anything else? said Joe. No, just potato salad, said Miss Mush. Mrs. Jules had made Miss Mush throw away the rest of the mushroom surprise, and she made Miss Mush promise never to make it again. Okay, I'll have potato salad, said Joe. Miss Mush smiled. She scooped a large glop of potato salad out of the vat and plopped it on Joe's paper plate. Sherry was next in line. She had also forgotten her lunch. And what would you like, Sherry? asked Miss Mush. What do you have? asked Sherry. Potato salad, said Miss Mush. What else is there? asked Miss Mush, asked Sherry. Nothing, said Miss Mush. Okay, said Sherry. I'll have that. Potato salad, asked Miss Mush. No, I'll have nothing, said Sherry. Joe was the only one who ordered the potato salad. Everyone else ordered nothing. He slid his paper plate over to the cash register and paid for his lunch. Then he went to the ketchup and mustard table. He looked at the grayish-white mound on his plate. He thought it needed more color. He squirted squiggly lines of mustard all over the potato salad. Then he added several droplets of red ketchup. That's pretty, Joe, said B.B. I didn't know you were such a good artist. Thanks, said Joe. He looked for a place to sit. Hey, Joe, over here, called John. Joe sat next to him. Hey, pal, he said. Hi, good buddy, replied John. They were best friends. John had bought his lunch. He looked at Joe's potato salad covered with yellow squiggles and red polka dots. That's very colorful, he said. Thanks, said Joe. They both stared at it. I wondered what it tastes like, said Joe, said John. Who knows, said Joe. There's plenty more potato salad, called Miss Mush. Who wants seconds? Nobody wanted seconds of potato salad. Several kids went back for seconds of nothing, but soon Mish Mush ran out of nothing. Finally, Joe picked up his plastic fork and stuck it into the glop. What does it feel like? asked John. Lumpy and gooey, said Joe. He dragged his fork over the mound, swirling the mustard and ketchup together. It's kind of spongy, too. The colors mixed with the potato salad. It turned a pale orange. It looks like a face, said John. Joe laughed. He shaped it so it looked even more like a face. He piled up some potato salad in the center, giving it a nose. John had a plastic spoon. He dug out two holes for the eyes and then made eyebrows as well. That's good, said Joe. He gave it a big, smiling mouth. John made long, pointy ears. I wonder what it tastes like, said John. Who knows, said Joe. They stared at it. It kind of looks familiar, said John. Like somebody I know. Who? asked Joe. I'm not sure, said John. Joe noticed it too. You know what? It does look familiar, he agreed. I've seen that face somewhere before, said John. Me too, said Joe. All of a sudden, the smile on the potato salad abruptly turned into a frown. Did you see that? asked Joe. John's eyes filled with terror. I just figured out who it looks like, she whispered. Who? asked Joe. Mrs. Gorf. The potato salad started laughing. Ha ha ha, said Mrs. Gorf. Now I'll get you. You think you're so cute, don't you? Well, you won't get away from me this time. She wiggled her ears, first her right one, then her left one. Quick, Joe, said John. Eat her. The two boys dug their plastic utensils into the potato salad and shoved it into their mouths as fast as they could. Joe swallowed the final mouthful. Whew, said John. That was close. Joe rubbed his belly and sighed. They both stared at the empty plate. You know, Joe, said John, that potato salad didn't taste that bad. It was pretty good, said Joe agreed. So they went back for seconds. Chapter 25, A Story that isn't about socks. It was class picture day. The children were all dressed up in their best clothes. 
Stephen came to school wearing a three-piece suit and gray trousers, a gray vest, and a gray jacket. Underneath his vest was a white shirt and a red and gold striped tie. On his feet were hard, black, shiny shoes. He was very handsome. The other kids laughed when they saw him come into the classroom. You've worn a lot of silly costumes, said B.B., but this one is the silliest yet. B.B., for class picture day, was wearing yellow shorts, a red shirt with white polka dots, and a floppy green hat. Mrs. Jules rang her cowbell. All right, children, settle down, she said. The children settled in their seats. Stephen remained standing. Look at Stephen, said Marisha. His jacket is the same color as his pants. They're supposed to be the same color, Stephen tried to explain. It's a suit, and they're not called pants. They're called trousers. Ooh, said Marisha. Can you go swimming in your suit? No, said Stephen. I could go swimming in my suit, said Marisha. For picture day, Marisha had on a black and white striped bikini. I'm sure Stephen's suit is good for other things, said Mrs. Jules. It is, said Stephen. Like what? asked Todd. Standing around and looking important, said Stephen. What about sitting? No, I'm not supposed to sit, said Stephen. The suit might get wrinkled. I'm supposed to stand around and look important. Okay, said Todd. Todd, for picture day, was wearing white shorts, a Hawaiian shirt, and sunglasses. Dee Dee crawled across the floor so Stephen, so she could get a better look at Stephen's shoes. They're so shiny, she said. I can see myself. She knocked one of his shoes with her fist. And they're hard, too. Dee Dee, get up, said Mrs. Jules. Dee Dee stood up. For picture day, she had on a black t-shirt that came down to her knees. In the middle of the shirt was a red heart. Above the heart, in sparkling silver and gold letters, it said love. I bet they're good for kickball, huh, Stephen? She asked. Since they're so hard shoes? No, said Stephen. I can't run in them. They hurt my feet. Then why do you wear them? Asked Dee Dee. Because they're uncomfortable, Stephen explained. You have to wear uncomfortable shoes if you want to look important. Oh, said Dee Dee. What's that thing around your neck? Asked Paul. It's a tie, said Stephen. Does it keep your neck warm? Asked Paul. No, said Stephen. Does it hold your shirt up? Does it keep your shirt on? Asked Paul. No, said Stephen. Well, what is the tie for? Asked Paul. It chokes me, said Stephen. Oh, said Paul. The more it chokes me, the better I look, Stephen explained. See? He started to tighten his tie. Oh, yeah, said Paul. You look real handsome. Paul was wearing for picture day cowboy and Native American pajamas. Stephen pulled his tie, his tie tighter. Now, how do I look? He asked. You look great, said DJ. Pull the tie tighter. Stephen pulled his tie even tighter. How's this? He gasped. You look great. Very important, said DJ. DJ, for picture day, was wearing a toga made out of his bed sheets. Pull it tighter, said BB. Stephen pulled on his tie, and he could no longer breathe. Tighter, everyone yelled. Stephen pulled the tie even tighter. His eyes bulged. His nose turned blue. He had never been more handsome. Tighter, they all shouted. Stephen pulled his tie so hard that he ripped it in half. Ooh, the whole class groaned. Oh, man, said Stephen. Now I'm not great and important anymore. Yes, you are, Stephen, said Mrs. Jules. You are just as great and as important as you ever were. I am, Stephen asked. Certainly, said Mrs. Jules. The tie didn't make you important. It doesn't matter what you wear on the outside. It's what underneath that counts. Underneath, asked Stephen. Yes, said Mrs. Jules. If you want to be great and important, you have to wear expensive underpants. Oh, said Stephen. Mrs. Jules, for picture day, had on a flower tank top and a grass skirt. Hope you have a great rest of the day. Next time, we'll be reading chapter 26, The Mean Mrs. Jules.